he is uh, already extremely unpopular. He is going to become more unpopular. We've got October the 30th coming up. I can't think of what shocking shape mm. Labour are going to be in. And the truth about the matter is that they got in because the Conservatives were hated. Yeah. And... And everything that Labour have done has now reminded everybody why the Tories were in power for 14 years. And somebody like Starmer, a wealthy, um, he's estimated to be worth 10 million quid, can't even afford to buy his wife's mm. dresses, nor can he even afford, he has to rely on Lord Welling he heard, he, to, to buy himself a suit. When, when did we ever have a Prime Minister who ever said, look me, I'm a KC, I'm this, that and the other, I can't afford my own glasses. Who ever said that? Nobody ever said that. And that's why people don't like it. Keir Starmer's recent controversy regarding undeclared donations has cast a shadow over the Labour Party, threatening its standing as the October 30th budget day looms. While Labour's leader promised transparency, the scandal surrounding a delay in declaring donations of clothing for his wife has left many questioning his integrity. For a prime minister who has spoken out about transparency, the issue has become a political grenade. The controversy began to unfold when it emerged that Prime Minister Keir Starmer had not declared, within the required 28-day window, a series of gifts intended for his wife, Victoria Starmer. These gifts included clothing items, as well as the services of a personal shopper, all provided by Lord Alley, a prominent donor and supporter of the Labour Party. The items were reportedly given both before and after Labour's decisive electoral victory in July. However, what raised eyebrows was the fact that these donations were not disclosed in the required time frame, which sparked a wave of criticism from political opponents and the public alike. Starmer's team eventually moved to correct this, but only after reaching out to parliamentary authorities for updated advice on how to handle the declarations properly. This delay in declaring the gifts prompted accusations that the Prime Minister had not been fully transparent from the outset, which contradicted his public stance on integrity and following parliamentary rules. While Starmer's team did eventually comply with the regulations, the timing of the disclosure coming only after consultations, fueled speculation about whether it was an honest oversight or a deliberate delay, complicating the political narrative around Labour's transparency and ethical conduct. This entire situation has become a flashpoint for those questioning whether Labour, under Starmer's leadership, can uphold the standards they claim to stand for. The situation has unleashed a torrent of criticism from various corners. One of the most vocal detractors, former Sun editor Kelvin McKenzie, made an appearance on GB News, where he did not hold back in his assessment of the Labour Party's future. McKenzie warned that the party would find itself in shocking shape as the upcoming budget day draws near, a critical moment for Labour to prove its competence. He argued that this controversy would further erode Keir Starmer's popularity, a trend that could leave him even more vulnerable to public dissatisfaction. According to McKenzie, the issue only serves to highlight Starmer's inability to maintain a consistent image of integrity, drawing uncomfortable comparisons to the Conservative Party's long-standing governance, which Labour has long criticized. McKenzie's remarks have tapped into a broader concern that Labour risks falling into the same traps that have plagued their political opponents. Despite the party's numerous promises to usher in a new era of transparency and reform, this incident may suggest that Labour could end up perpetuating many of the same problems it has vowed to eliminate. Mackenzie's scathing commentary reflects a growing sentiment that Labour's credibility may be increasingly compromised, casting doubt on whether they can truly differentiate themselves from the Conservatives in terms of ethics and governance. Criticism has also been sharply voiced by members of the Conservative Party. MP Andrew Griffith did not hesitate to launch an attack, accusing Keir Starmer of being entirely out of touch with the realities that everyday Britons, especially pensioners, face on a daily basis. Griffith highlighted the stark contrast between Starmer's financial situation and that of ordinary citizens, particularly those struggling to get by, such as pensioners who are barely able to afford heating or groceries on modest annual incomes of around £13,000. He pointed out that, while Starmer enjoys a household income of approximately £200,000, he still accepted donations of clothing for his wife. 
This, Griffith argued, reveals a fundamental disconnect between Starmer's privileged position and the financial hardships experienced by the average Briton. His remarks come at a time when the cost of living crisis continues to dominate the public conversation. With millions of people across the UK grappling with rising prices, stagnant wages, and increasing energy costs. The MP's critique was not merely focused on Starmer's personal choices, but underscored a broader political message that the Labour leader, despite positioning himself as a champion of working people, may not fully understand the severe economic pressures they face. Griffith's comments have struck a chord aligning with widespread frustrations over economic inequality and raising questions about Starmer's ability to relate to those who are most affected by the current financial crisis. Despite the barrage of criticism, Keir Starmer has stood firm in his defense, stating that he and his team took every necessary step to ensure they were fully compliant with parliamentary regulations. According to him, the moment they received the donations, they proactively sought guidance from the proper authorities to clarify what needed to be declared and when. He reiterated the importance of maintaining transparency in public office, underlining that adhering to these rules is vital for public trust. Starmer emphasized that his actions were not an attempt to hide anything, but rather a reflection of his commitment to ensuring that all parliamentary standards were met. Labour MP Paul Waugh has also stepped in to defend Starmer, offering further context. Waugh explained that the clothing donations were not frivolous gifts, but rather practical support for Victoria Starmer, who works in the NHS and has taken on an added public role as the Prime Minister's spouse. According to Waugh, balancing her NHS duties with the increased responsibilities of being the Prime Minister's wife required some outside assistance which is why they accepted help with her wardrobe. Both Starmer and Waugh emphasized that every effort had been made to be transparent and that the rules were followed diligently. While Labour insists that the necessary declarations were made in accordance with the rules, the public perception of this scandal may still damage Starmer's leadership. With the Tories pushing for a full investigation into the matter, Starmer's attempts to assert himself as a leader committed to transparency are in jeopardy. This controversy threatens to amplify already existing negative perceptions about the Labour Party, particularly in light of their past critiques of conservative governance. For years, Labour has built much of its political narrative around exposing the failures, missteps, and ethical breaches of the Conservative Party. They have continuously called out their opponents on issues of integrity and transparency, positioning themselves as the party of moral rectitude and accountability. But, this recent incident could undermine that image, presenting an ironic twist to their long-standing critique. By failing to declare the gifts within the required time frame, Labour has left itself vulnerable to the very accusations of impropriety they've so frequently levied against their political adversaries. Critics, both within the political sphere and among the public, are likely to pounce on this opportunity to paint Labour as hypocritical, suggesting that despite their promises of a new and transparent leadership, the party is still prone to the same kinds of ethical oversights. For some, this misstep may serve as a stark reminder of why the Conservative Party managed to maintain power for 14 years, and it might reignite doubts about Labour's ability to offer a clean break from the past. Rather than emerging as a party of reform and accountability, Labour's critics will likely seize this moment to argue that they are just as fallible, reinforcing perceptions that no party is immune to ethical lapses. As Budget Day approaches, Starmer faces an uphill battle to restore public trust. The scandal has added pressure at a time when Labour should be focusing on addressing the cost of living crisis and other pressing issues. With October 30th fast approaching, the future of Labour under Starmer's leadership remains uncertain. What is certain is that the political fallout from this controversy will have lasting consequences. Whether Labour can weather the storm remains to be seen, but for now, Starmer finds himself and his party in troubled waters. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share if you found this video interesting.